Morning my friends from Arba Minch once again and somehow I still have one camera my uh, old GoPro survived so I need to explain you what happened after um, after I went to see the Mursi so after seeing the Mursi I tried to go to see the Hammer and the Karo two other tribes so I went to a village called Turmi it was really not good but I did not like it they were charging like 10 times the price for uh, for foreigners like a, a room that cost 600 beer they were charging 40 dollars so I got pissed and I decided not to not to visit these tribes but then I tried I thought okay let's try to go to see the most difficult tribe to see the most isolated tribe and also the most interesting tribe in terms of um, of how they how they differentiate themselves from the, from the others. So I tried to go to see the Surma, or the Suri as they call themselves. And uh, yeah, so and in one week I did not find it was way too expensive. I started running into problem, I tried to send money. Because if you pay in dollars and if you pay in beer, it's not the same price. What the hell? So I tried to send dollars, but then I started to get ripped off by the bank because they didn't want to give me dollars they gave, wanted to give me beers with but with a fake exchange with a fake exchange rate so well everything went wrong and then i was about to give up to see the suri the surma <laughs> and then one guy showed up and proposed me a price that they could afford so then i decided okay let's go i went to see the surma across among the worst roads in the world Surely the worst ro roads in Ethiopia, so probably among the worst roads in the world. One full day to, to, to reach there. Absolutely extraordinary first day. Very interesting. They're very aggressive, so very complicated to film around, but it was quite uh, insane. Then the second day was less good, but to create some content, I bought a god for a, for a village because it's a, it's a kind of small city surrounded by many villages. And there is one village that is <laughs> where tourists most, mostly go. So I bought a goat for the village, ate the goat with the, with the people of the tribe of the village. It was quite good. But then the impression, my impression was, I went to see another village. It was really, it was really like a zoo, a human zoo. So it was very weird. But anyway, not so good impression. But then during the third, second day, we heard about a donga. You know, the famous uh, wooden stick fighting that uh, the Surma and the Mursi do because the Surma are cousins to the Mursi they speak a very similar language and they have the, the only difference is they, paint, they, they wear the lips, lip plate as well but they also uh, paint their faces <laughs> so they are a, a dream for photographers basically and so they were talking about a Donga taking place for the following day I was supposed to stay just two days there so four days tour in total, one day to go there, two days in the tribe, and one day to come back. But then it was a Donga, so I decided to extend my stay for one more day for the Donga. And then, oh my god, the Donga was just probably the most insane thing yeah. I've seen in my life. Just pure violence. Like three villages, all the young men together, all very close to each other, singing together getting excited together <laughs> and fighting with their, wooden with their wooden sticks against each other but like fighting for real like within 30 seconds of, this, of the Donga one guy got hit right in the middle of the head and was just covered in blood and he was like oh, he was just so happy to be covered in blood it was completely mental you could see everybody was naked <laughs> They were fighting between villages, even between friends. They just didn't care. It was just, just completely insane. Just pure violence. Well, pure tribal violence. Absolutely insane. So I filmed that, a video that was probably not well suited for YouTube, but I mean the most exp incredible experience in my life, and that would have been the most uh, incredible video I ever filmed. So the next day, we wake up very early to start our way back to Jinka. 
We pick up an escort from one of the guys who was protecting us during all my stay. So, because you have to, because it is dangerous, because basically there is a lot of robbery there. And you have to have an escort as long as you are in the area of the surma in order to avoid getting robbed. <laughs> and what happened is, so we, we, we dropped our escort at the last uh, surma village. So it's in the middle of nowhere, basically all the roads we took to go there, they don't even exist in the maps, they don't exist on Google Maps, they don't exist on the open database like for maps.me or, or the other app I use. The maps, the roads don't even exist. Very isolated, uncharted uh, dirt roads, a very isolated area, uncharted area basically. And yeah, after we dropped our escort, well, 500 meters later, we cross, uh, we go down, so you have to slow down a lot because we cross a small river called Coca. <laughs> and as we go back up and drive back up, in the distance ahead of us, we can see a guy with an AK-47 pointing at our car. So at first the driver does not really see him, or I don't know, he does not react, still keeps moving. And I'm like, pointing, uh, I'm like, telling him, well, the, 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 there is a guy pointing an AK-47 at us. So I tell him that and, oh my God. And then I'm like, you know, immediately, well, yeah, I, I don't realize what, what's happening, what's happening at the, at, at the moment, but I just, the only thing I think is like, I, I'm thinking maybe it's just a drunk guy who for some, I, I have no idea what is he doing, but I'm just thinking like, Fuck, he goes, he's gonna shoot, he's gonna shoot. And, and the AK-47 was kind of pointing at me. And I was like, just wondering, is he gonna shoot now? Is it gonna be now, now, now? Is, it, is the end gonna be now? Now, now, it doesn't happen. And, and the driver starts to, because the guy is maybe 100 meters ahead of us. So a bit far. <laughs> the driver starts to, to go backwards. But as he goes backward, he sees in the mirror two other guys behind us with AK-47s as well. So then he just stops the car and he goes down and hands up. So I don't understand what's going on. So I just, okay, I see him doing that. I just do the same. And then the violence starts. The, my guide is behind on the back seat. And for some reason, he doesn't go outside of the car. And one of the guys, there was there are six guys in total. One of the guys is not happy because he doesn't go outside of the car. So he just very, very quickly he runs to to take a catch a, a stone on the um, on the ground, a big stone like probably this size. And he throws the stone as strong as possible to the car to the window of, the, of my guide. Luckily, for some reason, the, the stone doesn't break the window. It hits a, 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 a steel part in between two, two parts of the window. And, well, and, and the guy survived somehow, because I guess if he, if, if he was hit in the head by this stone with how strongly it was, the guy threw it, I mean, he was dead. So then you see, okay, the violence is starting. You see that the guy is not, not kidding. So basically, they, they start shouting. They are shouting all the time. I don't understand anything, anything, of course. But basically, they ask for the money. So I just, I just go inside there. I just give my money. At the moment, I, I have in my in a small uh, place here. I have the money in my passport. So I just give the money. I keep my passport, and I give them everything else. I hand them my phone also. I don't want to want trouble. So I just hand everything I have. But I keep my passport and then they go search the car. They take the money from the, my guide, from the driver. And they search the car. And at some point I see things are cooling down a little bit. They already started to, I mean, for, it seems more quiet for me. They already hit a, a few times uh, my guide, I think. With uh, one, the, the boss basically of the six guys. You have three guys with AK-47s, uh, two unarmed guys, and one guy with a, one guy with a two-meter-long wooden stick, the sticks they use for the donga. 
and uh, this guy beat, beat up a little bit my guide. So uh, this time I, I think, for me it's, it's getting a little bit more quiet. So I think, what the hell, I'm gonna lose all these extraordinary videos I filmed. I paid a huge amount of money for this tour. And it's, uh, if I lose the video, all this money is lost. So, I, 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 I. So I, 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 I start to think, maybe I can ask you just to get my memory, memory card. So I approach them, I start to ask for my... I just start to try to first ask a question. As I start talking, the guy with the stick turns to me and starts beating me up. So I just, I just stop and he takes my passport for, uh, as a revenge for me trying to talk. And then the driver... Uh, yeah, the driver complains and tells him, you, you don't need his passport, why do you take his passport? So the guy starts beating my driver now. And that's all, then. so then we stopped talking. We all got uh, beaten up a little bit. Uh, and we have nothing left. Luckily, this way. Luckily, uh, I don't know for some reason, I don't know why. The guide was saying maybe because they don't know how to drive, but uh, yeah, luckily they they left our car. They left us our car, so we are now outside. My guide is almost naked because he tried to talk to them several times. So uh, as as soon as you were trying to talk, they were taking more things. So they were taking. They took his pants, and they even tried to take his um, his underwear. But uh, well, at the end, they, he managed to keep his underwear. So we are all like half naked outside and that's it everything is gone they just run into the bush again they disappear and we are here with with the car still at least but uh, all our money is gone all my things are gone my passport is gone four cameras are gone somehow I left my this camera this the my old GoPro I left it in Jinka so yeah it's good I left some things I left my computer most of my uh, except the cameras, everything else was in, in Jinka, so I did not lose my computer, I did not lose all the, all the stuff I have, but I lost all my cameras, power banks, <laughs> and especially uh, I lost all the... Hi! Um... Hi! I mean, in the end, somehow, yeah, the cameras is very annoying. So at the moment, I was thinking, no, I just need to, I just need to try to keep the, the, the videos, but, well, the videos are gone. It's sad because it was there where the, especially the one of the Donga, was probably the most video I ever filmed, but I will never edit it. You will never see it. I was, it was probably not suitable for YouTube or very hard to edit because everyone was naked. Well, most of the guys were naked, so you had dicks everywhere. You had blood everywhere also because, like, yeah, about 10 guys were like ble bleeding quite a lot. But it was like the the craziest thing I've seen in my life. You even had like guys shooting AK-47, but not even in the in the sky. They were shooting at, at human hate. They were shooting like like in between. You had a, you had a, a group fighting here, a group fighting here, the spectators here, and they shoot in between. So if someone is peeing in the bush, the guy is dead. If someone for some reason passes by at that moment, the guy is dead. And because you can't, I mean, when they were shooting, you did not even see them shooting because there are so many people, so many things, things happening anywhere, everywhere. So you don't see every, everyone. <laughs> and, and everyone has an AK-47, so almost everyone. So, so you can't check everyone. It's just completely mental. And yeah, and also it's very hard to attend the, the, this thing because, you know, their wooden stick is two meter long. So you have to be as close as possible to film and then as far as possible to avoid getting hit by, uh, by, by a stick at some point because uh, they go very far anyway yeah so that's uh, basically that's uh, what happened so it was my first time to get robbed with a weapon it was not a, a small version of it well 3AK 47s uh, it's not very pleasant to have a uh, to have an AK-47 pointed at you 
and like the guys were like and what's scary also because you know i mean i've seen them they were from the same tribe i've seen the donga the day before so i know these guys have no morality these guys are really violent have a violent culture so i know these guys they if, if they want to kill they, they just kill they don't care so it's, it's really really scary so then during a few days i was uh, almost thinking about like stopping the the stopping the thing with the bike across Africa because it's just too much but uh, well I was far from the main road I was deep in the bush then I met some then when I was back in Jinka I met some very friendly French people who live in French and Americans who live in, uh, in Addis they helped me contact the embassy uh, to know what to do and, I, and just when you when you when I start to say my story always about like how did you what do you do here oh I came here by an electric by with an electric bike and when I see the light in the eyes of the people every time I, I say I say this story I am like oh my god this is this is awesome so I had decided actually to stop I had decided that at some point to because the, okay I will tell you go with you through my, my decision making process basically so I make my decisions emotionally. I, 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 I change decision a lot of times and I see what happens then. But I really feel that, I really believe that that's what I want to do. So at first, after this happened on the road, I was thinking all the time, I was kind of a bit, well, kind of shocked. I don't think in the end it's gonna be a long-term trauma, but uh, yeah, I was kind of shocked. So I was thinking, yeah, but I can't give up just for that. But my stomach was painful. I was not confident with the with this decision. So then um, so then no. One day later I thought, no no, it's too much. I, I, I just can't I just can't continue. It's, what happened was way too much. I don't want to risk my life for for this kind of travel. So because I saw well I saw death from quite close. So so then I thought okay no I just I just give up or I give away the bike or maybe I try to fly the bike without the batteries fly it back to Europe and I'm tired because it's too slow because I'm stuck in like uh, very difficult areas of the world for for weeks and weeks where the food is really hard to it's really hard to find correct food I can't eat enough somehow uh, it's just hard it's just hard so I was thinking no I just go back to Europe I buy a car and and forget about the bike and I just do another journey but with a car so I can move faster and so that when I when I go through difficult areas I just uh, I can just keep them somehow or go faster through them and not spend like weeks and weeks because the south of Ethiopia is really really hard to travel and it's been weeks from here and it's really hard if you can do it in three days it's much 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 easier to handle but if if you stay one month one month and a half Oh my god after some time it's really really hard to handle so i was thinking because i know at some point anyway i will give up the bike at some point to go by car and i, I thought this is the right time but then i met these guys in jinka very friendly and i saw the light in the eyes oh you came by electric bicycle and i see this light and it's the same for you guys it just shows me What's the reaction of you, of some of you guys also? Maybe probably some, why some of you follow me. And I saw this, yeah, the light in the eyes, the amazement. And I was like, come on, I can't give up just for that. I have to continue. And I like the bike, actually. It's not about the bike. The bike is, I, I really like to travel with the bike. It's just about the, the time scale. It's just that every, everything is so slow because I have to, I, I go slowly with my bicycle, but then I have to do a lot of editing. So some probably be like 200K takes me one week at least, for example, to give you an example of the time scale of how slow is I am traveling. Well, if I was traveling with bicycle without doing videos, well, 200K would be just two days. So it's so much faster because the videos slow me down so much. So I thought I need a house, I need better food. I need to have something to cook food for myself. Because here I struggle so much to eat. Oh my god. Because I don't digest the injera. So then uh, if you don't eat injera, it's really hard to find uh, f food that it's not so bad in Ethiopia. 
That's that's what happened there. And this time I made the decision to know I continue again and I did not feel pain in the stomach. I felt energy, joy, thrill. I felt happy to be back in the game, on the game. So I, th I know it's the right decision and I will continue. But the problem is now, I have no more passport. So if it was just the passport, maybe I could do it here in the embassy. But the thing is, I have no more passport and I have lost all my cameras except this one. <sighs> Basically, I have to go back to France to get a new passport, get new cameras, get new power banks. Because there is nothing here in, in Ethiopia. It's just, I mean, nothing is available of all the electronics, everything, everything we have in the West. Nothing is available here. <sighs> so yeah, I'm condemned to go back to France probably for two, at least for two, probably for two months, maybe three, because it, it takes a very long time to to get an appointment to get the passport in France. Yeah, and then I will fly back to to continue the adventure. Honestly, I have no idea how long, how much more longer uh, this journey with the e bike is gonna last. Maybe it's one year more, maybe five more years, maybe ten more years. I have no idea actually. It will depend what happens. I guess if I get robbed and the bike get, the bike gets robbed, gets robbed, or the bike is not usable anymore, I'll probably I will not buy buy a new bike. I will just um, switch to maybe four by four traveling or something like that. So I'm more free of my movement somehow. But I have no idea when I will do that because I like the bicycle also. It's just it's frustrating because you miss so many things. Like here I go through Ethiopia. It takes me. It's gonna take me probably six months to go across the countries, the country, with all the trouble they had. And I went to none of the places I wanted to visit when I came here. I wanted to visit several places, and I did. I could not go because with the bike it's just too much. It takes too much time to do detours. So I did not visit anything. So that's a little bit frustrating. That's why maybe I will at, at some point one day I will change my uh, vehicle. But I think as long as I have the bike. I'll keep going and hopefully I could reach uh, at least Cape Town, maybe all the way back up to Europe, maybe all the way to Asia then, who knows. But yeah, that's the story of uh, how I lost probably the most incredible videos I filmed uh, in my life, but they are all lost. It's quite frustrating. It was very scary, man. It was, it was super scary. I always have this. It was super scary. I always remember this image of when we go back up the hill and seeing this guy pointing his AK-47 towards us. That's so scary, man. So so scary. So that's what happened. Yeah, and see you in probably about two or three months for me. Hopefully only one week for you. That was the adventure of me, of my guide, my driver and me, getting robbed by a violent tribe deep in a very, very remote corner of Ethiopia. See you for the next adventures. Ciao, guys. <laughs>